Hi, friends. It's Anna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life, and I'm here with our second look at the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 9, verses 6 through 9. Let's begin, as always, with our prayer before the crucifix. In nomine Patris, Affiliate Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Summe Glorioso Deus, Illumina Tenebras Cordis, Mehi et da Mihi Fidem Rectum, Spem Certum et Caritatum Perfectum, Domini ut Facium Tuum Sanctum et Verax Mandatum. Amen. In nomine Patris, Affiliate Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Sorry. <laughs> I wave at the end. I wave like that at the end of the videos after making the sign of the cross. It's become second nature, just like praying scripture should be second nature to you by now. If you've not joined us before for these Lexio Divina uh, videos, there's an entire playlist where in the beginning and throughout, I explain our method a little bit more. So if you've never done Lexio before or don't know what it is, you may want to pause here, get the playlist, go back and watch the first one. There's three of these every week. Okay, let's go out. Oh, let's go out. That's literally the first words. <laughs> okay. Well, not quite literally. Oh, it's been a day. Has it been a day for you? Remember back in the day when I had a prayer sweater here? Let's see. Well, I do have a pretty little shawl. So let's just take a minute, take a deep breath, take off this jacket. I'll Mr. Rogers it here. Sometimes it can help us to focus as we take that minute break in our day to spend time with the Lord. Sometimes it's helpful to just put on something different, you know, put on the new man kind of thing. We'll put on this little shawl and we'll be able, hopefully, to calmly pray together. <laughs> Ugh, how's this one sit? Grr, made this so long ago. <laughs> Here, I'll just kind of fold it up around my neck. Oh, that looks nice. Okay, we'll go with that. Whatever you needed, if you needed to pause here to go grab a sweater, take a drink, whatever it is you need to do to make a little space in our day for the Lord. And sometimes we have to get humble and realize we can't control everything. So just get ready to open up. Be receptive to this word. I can read it when I'm still all jazzed up and just like, oh, I got to get this done. Um, but I'm probably not going to receive it the same way. You need to make space to be able to receive something, right? You don't take a full bucket to the water hose, right? No. If you need to fill the bucket with water, you have to have an empty bucket to start with or you're not going to be able to fill it up. So like, hmm, take a few breaths. That's interesting right there because those people who meditate like to empty themselves out and just rest. We always say nature abhors a vacuum. vacuum and super nature abhors a vacuum as well, friends. So whenever you're going to empty yourself out, that's self-emptying, right? Um, you want to do it in the way Christ did, where you fill it up with God. You don't let it sit. You don't let it rest empty because something is going to come in there. You want that to be the triune God, right? So spend your time in prayer. Go get something on that you normally just wear to church. If you have a prayer sweater or something, um, get out your scapular, make sure you've got like a cross or something to look at. Like, let's make sure that we're truly doing this Christian. We're not tempted into those uh, Eastern mysticism ways because that is just no good. Okay. Are you ready? Let's just... Let's just say in Our Father real quick. That usually also really helps to cement what we're doing. If there's any confusion about what God we're praying to, the Our Father should take care of that. Our, we'll say it in English just to be super easy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Lord, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In going out, the twelve apostles went about through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all the things that were done by him, and he was in a doubt because it was said by some that John was risen from the dead, 
but by other some that Elias had appeared, and by others that one of the old prophets was risen again. And Herod said, John I have beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear such things? And he sought to see him. It's Sorry, I know you could just pause me and fast forward through me if you want, but it's just realized here that it's while the apostles are gone that Herod is contemplating this. A little bit more vulnerable for Jesus here. Did the apostles, when they dispersed, did the crowds following disperse as well? What did Jesus do in this time? This could be a moment where maybe today we'll look at some of the parallel um, scriptures and see what they tell us. Did the, the women who were helping out with the cooking and all, sounds like they didn't follow because Christ had said instructions about like abide wherever you go. Who's ever house you shall enter into. So you're probably not entering in with like each apostle with like 10 or 20 people. So interesting. Where did all the people go? This is a, a vulnerable, could be, we'll look and see, is this a vulnerable moment for Jesus when he sends them away? Where does he go? What is he doing? While Herod is suddenly contemplating what to do here. And going out, they went about through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now Herod, the Tetrarch, heard of all things that were done by him, and he was in a doubt, because it was said by some that John was risen from the dead, but by others some that Elias had appeared, and by others that one of the old prophets was risen again. And Herod said, John, I have beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear such things? And he sought to see him. And going out, they went about through the towns, preaching the gospel and hearing healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all things that were done by him, and he was in a doubt, because it was said by some that John was risen from the dead, but by others some that Elias had appeared, and by others that one of the old prophets was risen again. And Herod said, John I have beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear such things? And he sought to see him. Okay, let's get ready here. Matthew 10, 9. Wait, is that the right? No, it says, why? Why? Matthew 14, 1. Oops, went too far there. Matthew, close. 14, 1. Oh, yes, right here. Okay. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the fame of Jesus, and he said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works show forth themselves in here, in him. For Herod had apprehended John and bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, his brother's wife. For John said to him, It is not lawful of thee to have her. And having a mind to put him to death, he feared the people because they esteemed him as a prophet. But on Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask of him. But she, being instructed before by her mother, said, Give me here in a dish the head of John the Baptist. And the king was struck sad, yet because of his oath, and for them that sat with him at the table, he commanded it to be given. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was brought in a dish, and it was given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. Interesting. Interesting. So he's, he was actually sad. It has here that he was sad. He did not want to behead John the Baptist. Why was he sad? And so hearing from others that John the Baptist was risen again, probably really struck him. Perhaps it was like a ghost convicting him yet again. So John the Baptist had uh, reprimanded him, you know, saying he shouldn't have his, I think it was his brother's wife. Um, and, and, okay, so he had him in a prison cell and then he was tricked, basically, in, tricked by his own vanity again into killing him. And now, now he hears that he's about again. That could be quite frightening. We do have here that his disciples came and took the body and buried it and came and told Jesus. So he would have heard that the disciples had come and gotten the body. And he's like, can you imagine that night? Like, I was pretty sure I beheaded him. What happened? Like, I cut his head off. I didn't just kill him. I cut his head off. Like, how is he alive again? So yeah, he's probably really eager to see Jesus here. This is also Mark six fourteen. 6.14. Oh, 
Here we have. And the king Herod heard, for his name was made manifest. And he said, John the Baptist is risen again from the dead, and therefore mighty works show forth themselves in him. And others said it, it is Elias. But others said it is a prophet, as one of the prophets. And Herod, seeing, hearing, had said, um, John, whom I beheaded, he is risen again from the dead. So here he was feeling quite haunted and convicted, I'm guessing. For Herod himself had sent and apprehended John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, the wife of Philip, his brother, because he had married her. For John had said to Herod, it is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Now Herodias laid snares for him and was desirous to put him to death and could not. For Herod feared John, knowing him to be a just and holy man. Ah, this is why he was sad when, when he was forced to kill him. And he kept him, and when he heard him, did many things, and he heard him willingly. Herod had heard him willingly. And when a convenient day was come, Herod made a supper for his birthday for the princes and for the tribunes and the chief men of Galilee. And then that's when he made the deal that he would kill him. Let's see here. Um, again, just has the disciples here and came and took his body and laid him in a tomb. Interesting. interesting so it's looking back and telling us the story about how john the baptist was beheaded when this time comes forth interesting interesting so no it does not say it doesn't say where all the other crowds went oh you could imagine if herod was not insane before this point um and it, it makes it sound like he was being convicted hearing of john the baptist he wasn't just accused but he was like oh yeah this is wrong this is a holy and just man and he's like this close right wow it's powerful sometimes friends we hear the word of god and we know that we're doing something wrong and we're convicted we know we're doing wrong like we're, we're not questioning it anymore we know what we're choosing to do is wrong and we do it anyway and then you have that weird guilt shame ickiness when you go to church, like until you go to confession. And he didn't have that available. He did not He did pretty extreme too. I mean, pretty extreme. But what is that like? Or what is it like? What is it like in your life when people try and teach you a little bit more about Jesus and you don't hear it? Do you go after that person? If it's something that's too intense and you don't want to hear, are you able to hear them? How does that correction even come across? Is it something gentle? Is it very accusatory? We're always told to be really gentle with people a lot of the times. And here was John the Baptist being very in, in your face, this is wrong. And Herod was still able to listen to him. We have to ask, we have to ask for the grace of God to really open our ears to hear and to really be able to discern when something is of the faith, when it's morally right, when it's wrong. There's so much there. And we always think that we can reason our way out of it, but there's faith and reason. And then there's grace. Because those wings don't do us any good <laughs> without the unifying body in between to lift us up in flight. Yeah. Whoa. I'm going to leave that there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, let's give do the blessing of Brother Leo and be on our way. I'll see you again on Friday. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Benedicat tibi Dominus et custodiat te ostendet. Dominus facium sum tibi et miseria tortui. Convertat Dominus voltum sum a te et Dominus bonus det tibi pacem. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen.